Hello and welcome back, it's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth, and I imagine many of you recognise the series Colorado, and we're on the 12th one at the moment. Um, now I can't believe I actually missed this puzzle when Florian posted it all the way back in July, like I must have been basically sleeping for the last few months. Um, but the way I kind of spotted it is, I was looking for a two-star puzzle to feature this weekend, came across one that had a 97% rating as of the time of recording, um, Ascension Anti-Knight Arrows. Now, I imagine by now you guys have already guessed why I'm not playing this puzzle. It's already been featured elsewhere with 4,000 plus solves. So I was delighted to look in his catalogue and find that he did post another puzzle, Colorado 12. It's been a long time since we played a, a Florian Wartman puzzle. Uh, now, by now, I guess 12th in the series, we've done a lot of Colorado-themed thumbnails. So we've done... Uh, mountains, rivers, kind of ski resorts. So here's an attempt at something different with kind of like a western themed town, like ghost town maybe. Um, that's actually got, I'm going to say a salon by the looks of things, a sleuth salon. So, you know, he's quite, he's looking very chuffed about finding this out there in uh, Colorado. Anyhow, enough of the introduction. Let's take a look at today's puzzle and rule sets. From Florian Wartman, Colorado 12, and the following set of rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply, that means place the digits 1 to 9 once each in every row, um, every column if I can select one, and then every 3x3 three three box. Then we have, of course, the XVs. Digits joined by an X must sum up to 10. So if this cell is a 2, for example, this would have to be an 8 to make sure that these two cells add up to 10. Um, digits joined by a V, so these two have to sum up to five so if this is a two this would have to be a three and it you know continues that would have to be a seven etc now it explicitly says no not all x's and v's are necessarily given which um normally I say normally i think for half in the series the colorado series negative constraints do apply not in today's puzzle so a three next to a seven totally fine another two next to a three totally fine without a v without an x all of that is acceptable under today's rule sets then last but not least, we've got digits along the thermometer increase from the bulb end. So these two cells, well, that's the thermometer, that's the bulb end. If that's a two, this would have to be three or higher. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What I couldn't do is place a one on here. That is clearly no longer increasing from the bulb end and I've broken the puzzle. Fairly straightforward set of rules. Um, as always, why not play along? Link will be in the description down below for you to do so. And uh, with that said, I'm gonna restart the clock and see how I got on. Uh, I should actually mention Mrs. Sleuth is kind of just at a near, uh, nearby nail salon. And I imagine once she steps back at home and you just hear the dogs kind of screaming in joy, uh, you know what happened. Right. Um, classic kind of Colorado series. I know that fives can only be made up of either one four and two three. I don't know which is which. I just know that if they can see one another, same row, same column, same box, they have to be different. So I'm going to say this is blue, this is green, this is blue. All the low digits in box 9 are done, so these two have to be high digits to get to a 10. You need 1, 2, 3, 4 with 6, 7, 8, 9. So these have to be low. Don't know what this is, we'll come back to that in a second. That's a low digit though. These are all going to be high digits, again, for the exact same reason. So I've done essentially all the low digits. I say all the low digits. These are all the low digits. And it actually gives me a digit to place, five, if I have paid attention. Um, we've got two blues looking at this cell. So that can't be blue. Can't have three blues in the same row, column, or box. So this has to be green. This has to be blue. This would have to be red. This has to be green. I've got two in box five. So that's green. That's red again. Uh, I've got two blues and two greens in the column, so that's got to be red. And that's another five. That's two digits. And this has to be a low digit now, and it can't be blue. That's green. That's all the greens done now and blues in box five, so that's got to be high. That's got to be high as the counterpart. No five. So these are high digits because we placed all the other low digits. That is a five. Uh, this has to be green because I already placed a blue in the column. So that's green. 
that's red. That's two greens in row four, that has to be blue. That's red, that's two blues in column nine, that can't be blue, that's green. Two greens in row six, that's gotta be blue. I know what that is actually. Two blues in here, that's gotta be a mixture of green, red, in box seven. And we kind of nearly colored all of them, like very nearly. Don't know yet what this is. I mean, there's a bit of pressure with blue. You can see these are blue, that wouldn't be blue, this would be blue. But the fact that there's no negative constraints doesn't actually kind of prevent it from being either or. So that's kind of these cells basically are the last ones that we don't know the X or V as is this one. So I am going to just put that in here and have a think. Right, by now, many of you have seen kind of my approach to these puzzles, which is that I use letters as substitutes, kind of think of it as um, algebra, basically. And as long as I'm consistent in my naming, I can always revert it at the very end towards some kind of digit. So for example, what do I mean by that? If I consistently have blues as A and D, and I consistently have the A partnered with I and the D partnered with F, then as long as I continue to do so all the way through, then it doesn't really matter what letters I use. Um, and I'm gonna pick at random, this is B, this is C, that'll be B, that'll be C, that'll be B, that'll be H, H if I can type, that'll be five of course. Um, I actually don't know what these are. This is gonna be H of course, next to the B. B in here means that's C, that's G. That's also G. So what is this? Let's have a think about it. So it can't be B or D, so it's A or C, and therefore this is I or G. Okay. This is of course H. And we've done all the low, all the high letters except for one of them, F, G, H, up to G, which means this has to be C, this has to be B, that's all looking good. Don't know what blue this is still. You can see B and B. Sudoku says B has to be at the bottom, so that's BH. G, I, and H tells me that this is F, and therefore this is D. I mean, that A told me that earlier as well, if I kind of paid attention. D is up here, but I don't want a corner pencil mark just yet. B, you can see we can use the same Sudoku trick again. None of these are B, whereas B in box um, six, it's got to be in here. This is B or H, that's not G. We already knew that, didn't we? Of course we did. So this is F or I, and this is A or D, this is A or D, not very helpful. Five is not here. So essentially these are A, I or D. Okay. So if this is I, that'll be F and D. If this is I, that'll be A. If this is A, that'll be D and F, and that'll be I, then presumably nothing's wrong with this being D, that'll be A, I, and then that'll be I. Yeah, that wasn't a very useful pencil mark. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sure actually. Oh, sorry, I am sure. A is not here. D is not here. This is AD. That's also blue. That's the I. Sorry, I didn't mean to use... I tend to use upper case letters just in case I have a typo. So, you know, not waste my time trying to unwind it and find it. This is just quicker. So 
So this is G, I, and H. And obviously the H can't be in here because this is B and H. And it's easier to do that if I... So that's got to be not H. So that's H. This has to be... Well, the remaining letters are G and I. Uh, G and I pair in here, that means that can't be I. That's an F. That's a D. That's A. That's A. Uh, this is D and F. Not sure I can place it just yet. I don't think I can. This both look fine. This is five and I. These are also known. A, B, C, D, E. So this is F and G. And this is A, C, and five. That can't be C. Yeah, not enough, actually. Hmm. Sorry, paying, pay attention. D, A, F. Blues, where are they now? Got to be in here. There's one of each. There's another blue in here. These two are clearly high now. And they are G and F. How is that helping me? Not sure. So what have we got up here? Like, I mean, like, I need to resolve some of these things, not to make the um, like pencil marks ludicrous, because that's what would it would take right now if I pencil mark all of this. I'm not quite seeing how to make progress. So if I think about box nine, what do I need? I have B and C in here. I need H, I, and five. And yeah, I'm it's totally lost in there. That doesn't feel like the right place. I've got three of these, and then again, I would have two of them. Yay, Sudoku to the rescue. No. You see, the G can be in one of two places. F can be up here. So can I, for that matter, together with another blue, blue digit, which I can't still place. This has, oh no, it doesn't have to be. Hmm. C means C has to be in here, which means that can't be C. So that's A, that's I, that's G. That's F, that's better, that's G. Therefore, this is D, that's A, and that can't be D, that's F, that's D. That's helpful, I think. Because, yeah, the D bounces back, that's A, that's D. We know what this letter is now, F, yeah. And these are I and A. Don't know which one is which just yet, but progress is that known yes f gave me g gave me f a gave me five gave me c we're getting somewhere Slowly but surely, but we're getting somewhere. Kind of thinking we need to do more Sudoku, really. So, um, 
column three is very nearly done. We need three more things. We need a five. Five is not up here. So that's a five C. And therefore this is I G. G has to be down here. Therefore that's I. I has to be one of these two slots. Okay. Yeah, bit of Sudoku, C is not here. C is not, oh, C can be here. I was about to say this has to be C, but no, it doesn't. Um, I can place whatever this is, though. It's not C, D, E, F, G, I, which gives me A and I. Right, these are known letters. I need D and H, not helpful. And then this is A5 and G. And this is not A or 5, that's just G. That's not A or G, that's 5, that's A. Okay, it'd be helpful to disambiguate these. I'm sure the thermometers will come in handy soon. I say soon. We probably need to like almost finish the entire puzzle before we can actually use it, but I need I and something else. I and G. That's G. That's I. That can't be I. That's five. That's I. I now Sudoku is here. It's not C, but it could be 5B or H. Not very helpful. That 5, though, tells me that's the 5, that's the C, that's the 5, that's the B, C, H, B. Nearly there now. Sorry about being a bit pedantic about the colors, otherwise I really can get lost quite easily. That's H, B, H, B, C. And yeah, as I said, nearly there. And all of these are high digits. Right, a uh, bit of Sudoku to bring it all home and then we'll take a look at the thermometers, I guess. So I need a B up here, which can only be there. I need a C somewhere can only be here, whatever this is, I am assuming it has to be D, because the options are D and H, forget Sudoku for a second, we know that H is a high digit, six, seven, eight, nine, we know this is low, so that's D, which means H, D, and yeah, the thermometers will definitely come in handy in a moment. That's all the low digits done, that's the five, these are high digits, and this is a known digit. It's uh, H, and this is an F. Lovely. Right, let's think about what all of this means. H is the counterpart of B, and G is the counterpart of C. Sorry, I'm just going to have to think about it in numbers. So essentially, if B is 2 and C is 3, that would be 8, that would be 7. So essentially, it's saying that B is bigger than C. This is what that's saying. And D is, and C is bigger than D. So I need two green digits that are both bigger than D, since B is bigger than C. So D has to be 1, so that C can be 2, B can be 3, and we've got it from here. That's seven, that's eight, that's four, that's nine, and I is a six, and we're done. Lovely puzzle, Florian Wortman. Um, like, a, you know, when you come across a two-star puzzle and you solve it in under 20 minutes, you, you 
doubt the difficult rating, but I think it's just it's you know this systematic approach that I kind of we kind of developed over these series means it can turn most XV puzzles into something that's like highly approachable. Hope you guys enjoyed the puzzle and the return of the Colorado series as well as the solve. And I'll see you back for the next video. Bye-bye for now.